frigid temps move in as winter blasts death toll rises. Brutally cold conditions have prompted wind chill warnings from Virginia to Vermont as frigid temperature are expected to envelop the East Coast most of this weekend. CBS News has confirmed that at least 22 people nationwide have died from the recent blast of winter weather and cold temperatures. Wind chill advisories up as Arctic air pushes across the country. A storm began days ago in the Gulf of Mexico and first struck the Florida panhandle. By Thursday, it was wreaking havoc as blizzard warnings and states of emergency went into effect along the eastern seaboard. Wind gusts hit more than 70 miles per hour in places and some areas saw as much as 18 inches of snow. In the south, Tallahassee, Florida, saw snow and residents of southeast Georgia were treated to a rare half foot of snow. In New England, the powerful winds brought coastal flooding that reached historic levels in some communities with icy water overflowing piers, streets and restaurants and stranding some people who had to be rescued. 9.40 a.m. Temperatures in the single digits. Temperatures were in the single digits from Philadelphia to Boston on Saturday morning and expected to fall closer to zero Saturday night, with wind chills making it feel like minus 10 degrees to minus 20 degrees. In Burlington, Vermont, the temperature was minus one Saturday morning, with a wind chill of minus 30. It was 8 degrees in Philadelphia and New York City, with wind chills ranging from minus 9 to minus 11. 9 o'clock a. M. Saturday, wind chill warnings issued. The National Weather Service said Friday that temperatures in the Berkshire Mountains in western Massachusetts could seem like a frosty minus 35 degrees, parts of New Hampshire and Maine could experience minus 45, and Vermont's mountain regions could feel like minus 50 degrees. The Weather Service issued wind chill warnings for various days this weekend for parts of Vermont, New York, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Maine, and New Hampshire. These locations, however, will have nothing on the White Mountains in New Hampshire. The Mount Washington Observatory, on its website, predicted the mountain's highest summits could see wind chills of minus 100 degrees into Saturday. 9.10 p.m. Cruise ship sails through thick of winter storm. CBS New York reports on a story about a family who returned Friday after what they called a nightmare aboard the Norwegian breakaway. For 21 members of the Ross family of Stony Brook, it was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime, cruising to the Bahamas for their patriarch's 80th birthday. I thought I'd never be in a situation where I would say that's the scariest moment of my life. This was the worst moment of my life, Caroline Ross told CBS New York. Ross says their 4,000-passenger cruise ship sailed into the storm Tuesday night for two harrowing days in 20 to 30-foot ocean swells. The seasoned boaters called it dramatic. 7.50 p.m. Massachusetts couple rescued after water floods home. CBS Boston reports that residents in Winthrop, Massachusetts, are spending another night in the cold as the storm wreaked havoc on seaside neighborhoods. Winthrop Fire Captain Scott Wiley said crews responded to at least 150 calls in the last 24 hours for flooded basements, problems with smoke alarms and odors and heating issues. They've been pumping basements around the clock in neighborhoods like Pico Avenue where Sean Driscoll's basement flooded and three cars were damaged. He managed to get his family to a hotel but now has no heat, electricity, or water. I was a kid during the blizzard of 78 and this was definitely close to that, he said. If I didn't get out of the basement when I did, when water passed the electrical panel, I could have been electrocuted, Esposito said. I'm lucky I got out before that. He says the bucket rescue was a hair-raising experience, but he was grateful for the lift. The only bad thing was the metal blade was so slippery with and snow it was hard to keep yourself steady, he said. LT. Governor Karen Polito met with Winthrop Town officials to tour the hard-hit area and assess the damage. She is hoping for some federal disaster relief. We will evaluate all the estimates and then determine what next steps can be taken, Polito said. 7 p. m. Baltimore schools close amid flooding, heating issues. Public schools were closed in Baltimore on Friday, but it wasn't a snow day. The schools have been dealing with flooding and heating issues blamed on decades of neglect and mismanagement. Outraged by the state of Frederick Douglass High School, Teacher Kira Gubuta posted videos of buckled floors and burst pipes on Facebook, CBS News Errol Barnett reports. It was almost as cold in there as it is out here right now, Buta said in one video. It flooded the first day and I moved to another class, then that class flooded. Since 2009, the school system has returned roughly $66 million in state funding for repairs. According to the Baltimore Sun, that's because contracts didn't comply with regulations. 
but the schools told CBS News that's misleading and say specific requests for school heating systems, including one for Frederick Douglass High School, were deferred by the state. One new practice stemming from all this will be an early morning temperature check at each Baltimore school, so decisions to close can be made on an individual basis rather than at the district level. 6 p. m. More than 50 cars destroyed in Massachusetts. CBS Boston reports that the parking lot at Gloucester High School in Massachusetts was a car graveyard thanks to the storm surge that buried dozens vehicles during Thursday's high tide. The cars are now a total loss. I feel like crying, I have no car. Bonnie Orlando told the station. Folks spent Friday trying to salvage whatever they can. Chris Bowers and Kyra Limberaki's plan to marry this April and their gift list will need to include a new car. Their vehicle was flooded up to the roof. My family is from Louisiana so flooding is not foreign but we just we never thought it would happen here, Bowers said. City officials had asked residents to park their cars in the lot while the parking ban was in effect. It's an unfortunate situation. We've never had a storm surge like this in the city. This parking lot was flooded. They can't be salvaged. They were all underwater and floating, Gloucester Chief Administrator Jim Destino said. Limberaki said she's frustrated over the loss of her car. We had no idea there was no other place to park. This is where we were told to park and then they got flooded, she said. Residents now hope their insurance will cover the cost like the storm covered their cars. 305 p. M. Search launched for missing Maine Clammer. Maine authorities are searching for a clammer who disappeared during the blizzard. The man was reported missing around 11 p.m. Thursday. The U.S. Coast Guard says the family of 35-year-old Paul Brenner said he had departed from St. George at 5 p.m. Thursday to clam on Clark Island. The Coast Guard says Brenner was reported to be in a 16-foot skiff that matches the description of an unmanned skiff found near Long Cove on Thursday night. The Maine Marine Patrol and local authorities are searching the area by water, foot, and air. St. George is a coastal area about 46 miles southeast of Augusta. Seas are about 3 feet, and the water temperature is about 37 degrees. 2.12 p.m. Death toll from winter blast rises. CBS News has confirmed that at least 22 people nationwide have died from the recent blast of winter weather and accompanying cold temperatures. The deaths include a Wisconsin man reported missing last month and a Massachusetts state worker. In western Wisconsin, the Barron County Sheriff's Department said deputies on Wednesday were rechecking an area where Joseph Moon was last seen and discovered his body. The 49-year-old Chetek man was reported missing December. 27. Officials say the initial cause of death appears to be exposure to the cold, but other factors could also have contributed to his death. Outside Boston, in Arlington, Massachusetts, a state water resources authority worker collapsed into a snow bank while shoveling snow and ice and died. 11.44 a.m. Sledding girl killed by truck, snow plow kills man. Authorities say a girl struck by a pickup truck while sledding and a 75-year-old man hit by a snowplow while clearing business parking lots have died in Virginia in the aftermath of the snowstorm. Police in Chesterfield County, a suburb of Richmond, Virginia, say the girl was sledding down a driveway when she slid into a road and was hit by the pickup truck Thursday. Police say in a statement that the driver immediately stopped and that the girl was taken to a hospital where she died of her injuries. The girl wasn't immediately identified. In the greater Hampton area of southeast Virginia, authorities told the Virginia pilot that a 75-year-old private contractor, Barry Hale, was hit by the plow shortly after midday Thursday while clearing snow from parking lots in Buckrow. He died at a local hospital of his injuries. A police statement says the Virginia Department of Labor will conduct a follow-up investigation. CBS News has confirmed that at least 19 people nationwide have died from the blast of winter weather and accompanying cold temperatures. 1121 a. M. Helicopter footage shows storm damage. CBS Boston has sent a helicopter above coastal communities in Massachusetts to survey storm damage. You can watch the footage in the player above. 1057 A. M. Cold temps close restrooms at Mississippi Capitol. Frigid weather is causing water pipes to burst underground in Mississippi's largest city. The entire city of Jackson was put under a precautionary boil water notice Thursday because of pressure problems. Portable toilets were placed outside the state capitol, where legislators are meeting. Some restrooms in the four-story building were blocked off because toilets wouldn't flush. 
temperatures in Mississippi have been at or below freezing for several days. 10.37 a.m. Cancellations expected to continue as carriers regroup. As of late Friday morning, nearly 1,200 domestic or international flights involving the U.S. have been cancelled, according to tracking website FlightAware.com. On Thursday, nearly 4,400 flights were cancelled. FlightAware expected cancellations to continue through the morning at most northeast airports as aircraft and crews are repositioned. 9.59 a.m. Meal delivery driver finds man who froze to death. Authorities say a 64-year-old Ohio man whose body was found on the front porch of his home by a meal delivery driver froze to death. The Akron Beacon Journal reports the Summit County Medical Examiner's Office on Thursday confirmed that Darnell Wilson, of Akron, died of hypothermia. His body was found Tuesday by a woman delivering food for the Mobile Meals program. The high temperature in Akron reached just 14 degrees that day. It's unclear how long Wilson had been on the partially enclosed porch before his body was found. CBS News has confirmed that at least 19 people nationwide have died from the blast of winter weather and accompanying cold temperatures. 9.28 a.m. Eroding coastline worries Maine man. The storm dumped more than a foot of snow in parts of Maine, CBS News correspondent Jerica Duncan reports from Saco, south of Portland. Along the coast, powerful winds led to some of the worst tidal flooding in four decades. Over the last decade, Sean Walker has seen how an eroding coastline in Saco threatens homes. My childhood memories are being washed away, Walker said. On Thursday, he watched the storm pound the area once again. What's kind of going through your mind? Duncan asked Walker. Cross your fingers, he said. Really, cross your fingers and hope for the best. 9.05 a.m. Supermoon intensified record coastal flooding. The storm's coastal flooding in New England reached levels not seen since the blizzard of 1978, CBS News correspondent Don Dollar reports from Boston. When floodwaters receded, the plummeting temperatures turned any left behind into ice. The record flooding was caused by a disastrous mix of events. The storm hit during high tide, which was intensified by Monday's supermoon. It was just coming down, and it was like up to my waist, said Jennifer Camaty of Marshfield, Massachusetts. I couldn't get back. The National Guard used high water trucks and even a bucket loader to rescue families stranded in their homes. It was scary, and I wanted to get out, said Nicole Camaty. They came up to the front door and they like he put me over his shoulders and put me in the car.